This just in, the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, and the Freedom of the Press Foundation have just issued letters to the federal judge about the FBI raiding our home and the case involving the president's daughter's diary. My home was raided by armed FBI agents in the pre-dawn hours of November 6, 2021. The ACLU writes, opening the door for criminalization of journalists' receipt or possession of expressive materials would result in censorious prosecutions under existing law and inspire legislators to conjure up disastrous new ways to thwart journalists seeking to expose malfeasance. This is a five-page letter. I'm going to read some of these some of these sentences to you. The proper resolution of this dispute is a matter of significant interest to the American Civil Liberties Union and its members. That's pretty shocking to a lot of people out that the ACLU is defending James O'Keefe. In this letter, the ACLU cites a case called Bartnicki de Vopper, a famous United States Supreme Court case from 2001 that says journalists can publish stolen information so long as journalists played no part in the theft of that information. The ACLU writes, limiting First Amendment protection to publication will reduce Bart Nicky to a nub. The right to publish newsworthy information is of little use without the concomitant right to possess the information upon which the publication depends. ACLU writes, courts have long recognized that otherwise valid laws may become invalidated in their application when they invade constitutional guarantees. Now here, it appears to be undisputed that someone else had already stolen Ms. Biden's diary before petitioners, that's that's me and, and Spencer, are, acquired it or even knew it existed. Now the government wrote a response to what we argued. The report acknowledged that petitioners, again, that's me, cannot be held culpable for publishing the contents of the diary, but appeared to suggest more generally that Bartnicki v. Bopper, that Supreme Court case, does not bar criminal charges for receipt and possession of stolen information, even if the information touches on matters of public concern. That distinction is dangerous, writes the ACLU, and would and would turn Bartnicki, that Supreme Court case, on its head. Limiting Bartnicki to publication of records that were unlawfully obtained or disclosed by a source and excluding from its reach the receipt and possession of those documents would afford legislators and prosecutors an easy runaround of the First Amendment, the ACLU writing. The First Amendment does not indulge such workarounds. Thus, Judge Kotal recently recognized in a WikiLeaks case, that was the Democratic National Committee uh, suing WikiLeaks that went up the federal court system. In that WikiLeaks case, that quote, journalists are allowed to request documents that have been stolen and to publish those documents. Other authorities bolster Democratic National Committee's conclusion that press freedoms extend to receipt and possession as well as publication of stolen documents. And in 2021, the Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland himself, issued a memorandum providing that the De Department of Justice will no longer use compulsory legal processes for the purposes of obtaining information from or records of members of the news media acting within the scope of newsworthy activities. That means you don't raid my home with guns pointed at me, stealing my reporter's notebooks. That's what that means, Mr. Attorney General. The Attorney General prohibits such conduct by his Department of Justice, and the ACLU acknowledges that. And we urge this court to affirm that the First Amendment protects a reporter's right to receive and possess a document. In matters of public concern, there were even if, even if they were unlawfully obtained by a third party, any other result would undermine not only the Supreme Court's holding in U.S. Uh, Supreme Court case Bartnicki v. Bopper, but also decades of precedent protecting news gathering and other necessary antecedents to constitutionally protected speech. Signed, Brian House, Brett Max Kaufman, American Liber Civil Liberties Union, Council for Proposed, Emma Kikurai, ACLU, Freedom of the Press Foundation, and Bayer. Thank you very much to the American Civil Liberties Union. Stay tuned. We are going to continue fighting for the First Amendment.